I'll be playing a video by Pastor Kinsley. Don't forget to subscribe, like my video, and share. Remain blessed. When God made Adam, Adam was alone for some time before Eve came. Hope we saw the story. They made Adam and it was with animals alone. So for one of the first differences is that when men want to reboot, men reboot in isolation. When women want to reboot, they reboot in company. So women don't understand when a man is moody sometimes. He doesn't, doesn't want to be around anybody. He needs space. It's okay to give him space sometimes. Men think better sometimes when they're alone. They need that time. Because that was their first habitat. When they were made, they were all alone. Just chewing grass and animals. So nobody was talking to him. He was, he was with his thoughts. So men internalize things a lot. It's their thoughts. But when a woman came, the first thing a woman had was company, interaction. So women do better. If a woman wants to reboot, she wants to be amongst people. She wants to be among her, with her husband. Somebody get what I'm saying? So women like company. Sometimes men need space to think. Under common example, men get their fulfillment from work. That's why women, you must understand that a man gets a lot of his happiness from how well his work is doing. Because women don't get it sometimes. Say, what's wrong with you? Now let us play. His work is not going well. He will never give you his best. He needs to be doing well in his work. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Because men get their ego and fulfillment and happiness from their work. Why? When God made man, the first thing he gave Adam was work. Listen, women, work is most men's first love. You might not know it, but it's the truth. It's work he gave him first. That was the first thing Adam fell in love with. Work. He didn't even know he needed a woman. It wasn't Adam that prayed for a wife. It was God that said this one. The way this one ruined my mind in the bush. Let me give him a help before he kill himself here. Adam didn't even know he needed a wife. He was roaming around in the bush, naked. So the first thing a man fell in love with was work. But the first thing a woman fell in love with was a man. Because the first thing a woman landed, the first thing she heard was show Adam, handsome boy. So women are always interested in marriage. Somebody got what I'm saying? That's why when God was going to curse them or curse and punish them for what happened, he cursed man's work, he cursed women's relationship. That's what's important to them. You can't punish me what I don't like. If I don't like to eat rice, you're not telling me from today, your punishment that you won't eat rice. I'll be like, <laughs> that's fine. So when God was going to punish them, he told man that from now you will sweat before you make any money. Went to where it will hurt him. For the woman, he said, same thing, now you will sweat before you give birth, and your desire will always be to your husband, even though he's behaving foolishly. He went to where to pain them. That's how you punish people. You don't punish people where he doesn't pain them. Hallelujah. And the same thing applies. When in, in, in First Peter, like I quoted earlier on, when God, when, when God wants to get a man to respect his wife, he said, I'm going to hold your work. You can't tell a man, if you don't love your, love your wife, it will help her, it will help you. Mm -mm, man won't understand that one. Because if you don't love her, I'll close down the work. And the man will say, yes, sir, I will love her. I will love her. Because <laughs> you are holding him where to pain him. He said, your prayers will be hindered. I went to preach in one Igbo church. You know Igbo church? <laughs> you know there are some churches that you can tell the tribe of the church. Because the pastor is a certain tribe, the music, everybody is the same tribe. And even when they are preaching, they put in that tribe language. Everything, even the announcement, they read it in that language. So you can tell the whole church is an Igbo church, or the whole church is a Yoruba church, or the whole church is an Alsa church. So I went to preach in one of those churches. Everybody is Igbo. And everybody, they don't, they're not ashamed of it. Everything is done in Igbo way. Even their English is sounding like Igbo. Proper Hebrew church. So I went to preach there on marriage. As I was preaching there, it was obvious that only the women, women were paying attention. The men, you know that somebody dragged them there. They were not interested. So I quickly had to twist it. I said, I, wrote, I read them First Peter 3, 7. I said, if you don't treat your wife according to knowledge, if you don't honor your wife, I said, your container will be seized. <laughs> <laughs> I know most Igbos are importers. They are business people. Made the head container. I said, oh, so give me a container. <laughs> container? <What's it? laughs> they were suddenly interested. I said, yes, your container, they are going to seize it if you don't love your wife. <laughs> They began to pay attention immediately. <laughs> Anything that we affect in Bowman container is interesting. <laughs> so God knows that. God knows I can't get a man's attention by telling a man that if you love your wife, you make her happy. That won't get him. If you tell him if you don't love your wife, you will not prosper. That will get his attention. I tell people that God is my relationship mentor. I learn relationship from him. If you see how he addresses things, you will know he knows how we behave. He said, I will cut off your business. In Malachi, he said the same thing. He told them they were crying that why is God not accepting our offering? God said, because of the way you're treating your wife of your youth. So I'm no more prospering you financially. That's how God got their attention. By cutting their finances, they will hear what? I canceled a couple out of there outside the country. The husband got into a very bad relationship. As in, he was married, but he was dating one girl, and he was, he was flaunting the girl in front of her, his wife. He was bringing the girl home to come and take the kids out. He was just messing up. And I spoke to him and spoke to him and spoke to him. And the wife prayed, spoke to him. We prayed and everything. He was still misbehaving. After many years, he had not stopped that relationship. He has gone back home. He now, was now doing well with his wife. So I went to visit in town, and he came to me, and I asked him one-on-one. -on -one. I said, hope you have stopped all that rubbish you were doing then. Hope you are back on track. He said, yes, yeah, so pastor, you know I'm starting a new business. 
Do you understand? The reason why he had to put his life in order. Because he knew his business won't go forward without that. So women, sometimes, I'm sure this, the thing that will get his attention is not this, you're crying. Now you're crying. I, I taught women that, see, if a man breaks up with you, don't go there and cry. Don't go there and beg him. Nobody breaks up with you suddenly. They've thought about it. They, in fact, they've left you emotionally three months before. They're just waiting for the right opportunity to tell you. So one day, just match them. Just say, see how you, you match me. It's over. I can't continue like this. You can't keep matching me. I'm matching my children if I'm married. No. It can't work. <laughs> he has broken up since. It's how to tell you he's thinking. So if a guy ever breaks up with you, don't beg him. Don't beg him. Don't cry. Or don't, you see, don't do all those sakara. He has made up his mind three months before that time. He might be dating a person already. He's just how to tell you he's waiting for. So don't go and be crying. Say, hey, please, you know, we'll make, we'll make it work. Mm -mm -mm. If he tells that kind of thing, tell him, okay. I've heard you. Thank you. Give me my charger. Pick my this thing. Collect all your things there. Be going. Say it is well with you. May you reap the fruit of your labor. Then when you reach where your friends are, sit down, remove your wig and be crying. It's okay to cry where your friends are. <laughs> your friends love you unconditionally. They will pet you. But don't cry there. Don't disgrace the remaining part of your family there. The small dignity you have left, carry it with your charger. And be going. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so men, men get their ego from work. Women get their ego from family life. Women somehow keep feeling unfulfilled until they marry. Even when they marry, they feel unfulfilled until they have children. It's a thing for them. It's a thing of pride or a thing of shame for them if the marriage is not working with relationship. So when men meet and they've not met after many years, when they meet, when they shake, say, guy, what are you doing? The next thing they're asking is, what are you, what do you do? What do you do? If they don't ask you, they exchange card, business card. Men like to share their business card. You see, women, you must understand the place of a business card. A business card is powerful because sometimes you don't want to introduce yourself. You want your card to introduce you. I was in a plane one day with one man, and we were talking, and the man was reading a book of Andrew Womack. I don't know if you know Andrew Womack, he's a big minister of God. And I've been at one Andrew Womack meeting that I took picture with Andrew Womack, so I quickly told my wife, send me that our Andrew Womack picture. <laughs> Let me deal with this guy. <laughs> so she quickly sent me the picture, I saw the guy, that book you're reading, this man here, see him, me and him here. <laughs> we are meanest, we are cool. <laughs> yeah. I was feeling good throughout the flight. At the end of the flight, the guy said, I want to give you my card. I said, no problem. When he gave me his card, he's the MD of one of the biggest parasites in Lagos State. So I said, I forgot to this man's wife. So I, I, <laughs> I would have respected him. This man is a big man. Oh. So sometimes, you don't tell people, I'm so and so. When you give them the card, it's not just where you are working that they want to look at. Your designation. When they see MD CEO. MD NMPC. You say, sir? Sorry, sir. Come back. Excuse me. <laughs> So men get their reputation, they share card. When women meet, when they open their post, they're showing picture. This is my husband. These are my three children. This is Yoma, uh, so and so, so and so. This one is a Pamari sis. This one is Pamari two. This one. <laughs> That's all men are showing. <laughs> because they get their esteem from there. Men get their esteem from work. So where do, where do you work? Where do you work? Hallelujah. So they get fulfillment from work. So women, when you see when you see a man feeling down, check on his business. That's why if his business is going well, he'll be happier. And if he's happier, he will make you happier. Same thing with you, men. You must understand that women take family life seriously. So I give men a quick tip. Whenever they're doing conferences like this, you take the lead and invite her. Tell her, oh, honey, we must go for this marriage conference. Oh, we must go for this marriage meeting. Oh, we must go for this thing. Because women like it when a man is in touch with his emotions. When a man is in touch, when a man likes family life. Because women like family life. Like you spending time with the kids. Like you talking about marriage. Talking about relationship. So men don't find it interesting at all. But it's very important. Next one. I'm just giving different examples. Men talk for information. Women talk for affection. So it means men talk only when there's something important to say. Men don't believe I need to have to just be talking for talking sake. Men talk when there's something I need to tell you. So you can see men, they are close friends. For three years they don't talk. And they call themselves and they go straight to the point. Say, guy, I they come Abuja. I go see you. Say yes. I go stay your place. Yes. Bye. Thank you. No issue. If it's a woman, you've not spoken to her for three years. You just call her. They have to come and stay in her place. Say, hmm, where, there's no space. In her mind, so oh, three years and now you remember to call me. But for men, it's fine. Men talk for information. We don't check up on ourselves, just checking up. Nah, that's awkward. So I just they check you. Say, for waiting, what's happen? <laughs> men don't just call you for nothing. But women, when you are in a relationship with a woman, she expects you to call even for no reason. She expects you because women talk to someone because they like them. 
not because they have something to tell them. If they like you, they want to talk with you. So my wife had to train me when I first started dating her that you, 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 you can't just, you know, you drop me off at home on Monday and we're supposed to see you next Monday and you don't call me till that next Monday. You know, me, for men, we don't, we have just that today and we have agreed we'll see you next Monday. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Till then, anything I want to tell you, I will keep it till next Monday. But women's my wife said, no, you must check on me every day. I said, I don't have anything to say. It doesn't matter. Just call and we'll be talking. I said, I didn't know that because men, I can't call my friend and say, no, I have nothing to say. I just call you. Ah. Because are you okay? But for women, that's very okay. Hey, I'm just calling you. That for women is very okay. Because if they like you, they want to talk to you. So as a man, if you, you saw your wife in the morning at work, yes, I mean in the house, and you went to work by 12 in the afternoon, just call her for no reason. Say, honey, I'm just checking up on my work. Just checking up on you. If you don't know what to say, don't worry, she will find something to say. But you are scoring major points by just talking. My wife taught me that. On that time, my wife taught me that if you drop me, if, you go, if, 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 I, if I score me to the bus stop and I enter a cab or a bus and I'm going home, when after I have some time, check if I've reached home. Me, me, I didn't know that. You told me you are going home. I believe you. <laughs> Why am I, if the only time I should, you should, I should hear from me is if you didn't get home. If you got home, it's fine. So I didn't know that. Some people, it's a big deal. You must, you drive the bus, you must check every two minutes. Have you, have you, have you got your home? Are you asleep? <laughs> no, it's my ghost answering you. <laughs> Praise God. Women talk for affection. So women like it when you just sit down and talk. You are eating, just leave your phone and talk. You are together, leave TV and talk. See, talking heals and helps women. Women help, talking helps them express their emotions. Men think more than talk. So a man can be doing a lot of thinking in his head. That's why you can't ask him, what are you thinking? Ah, he's th he will start thinking which of the things he's thinking, he can tell you he's thinking. Because he's thinking too many things. <laughs> but women enjoy talking. So you must master the art of talking. Listen, men, and let me be honest with you, sometimes when they are talking, you have no clue what they are talking about. But you must participate. So, mm -hmm. ha! Really? How? You must learn those little two words. One, one word that helps the conversation. That's your own contribution. Don't just be like you're not interested. No, you must act interested. Say, hey, ah, what happened? Hey? When? Which phone can? Say the black one. The black one. Even though you don't know the black one. <laughs> Women like to talk. Hallelujah. Next one, men are moved by what they see. Men are moved by what they see. So that's why if most men don't have good self-control, they will have shifting eyes. So that's why you too, as a woman, you must try to look beautiful. No matter your age, keep looking good. Keep dressing well. Men are moved by what they see. Because the first thing Adam saw was a naked woman. That's why men still attracted to pornography. Saw a naked woman. <laughs> the first thing he saw. He didn't know when he began to rap. Born of my bone, flesh. Adam was the first hip hop artist. <laughs> Born of my bone, flesh of my flesh, yo. <laughs> I didn't know where he got that rap from. First lyricist ever. But the first thing Eve heard were sweet words. So women are moved by what they hear. So that's why sometimes you see a woman that is very beautiful, marry a man that is short and ugly. You'll be saying, What did she see? It's not what she sees, what she heard. That guy is a toaster. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's a toaster. He might not even have money, but he's a good toaster. Women are moved by what they hear because the first thing Eve encountered were sweet words. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, sweet words. She said, thank you. She now did her hair like this. <laughs> even though she didn't know what it meant. Women are moved by what so, so as a husband, you must constantly shower your wife with words. Be very generous with words. You see, the problem is that men don't need words, so because of that, they don't give words. No, just because you don't need words doesn't mean your wife doesn't need it. Your wife needs it. So, uh, when, I, when, I, when I get to how to handle it, I'll explain that. You must go out of your way to give compliments regularly. You and your wife can't be going out. She finished dressing up. You don't tell her she's looking fine. Nah. You must be the first person to tell her she's looking beautiful before anybody else outside tells her. She just finished making her hair. Shower with compliments. Women like words. Words strengthen them, enrich them, heal them. Men don't need words. Don't need too much words. Hallelujah. If a man sees another man with a bad car, you don't have to tell him his car is bad. He knows his car is bad. He knows he has oppressed you. He sees watch. Rolex. What's the time? So it doesn't have to tell you his Rolex. You are seeing it. But women need to say it's beautiful. Somebody get what I'm saying. When I move by what they hear. Let me move into what, what are we going to do since we know all these differences. There are many of them. For instance, men are future-minded. Women are past-minded. That's why if you offend a woman, 1982, <laughs> there 
their memory is stronger. For men, men are forward driven. So no matter what happens to men, they are so forward driven, they will forget their past. Men don't remember. Two men can fight here now and by afternoon they are eating together. Physical fight, oh. they happened in my estate. The two security men, they fought themselves, blood came out. Oh. By afternoon I saw two of them eating. Same day, afternoon, they were eating together in the same bowl. If it's women, that fought like that. 1982. I can never forget what Juliana did to me. 1982. That's why you must not be careless with your words. Because whatever you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. When a pastor entered, they will remember everything. That's why women struggle more with letting go of their past. And women, that's why you can't keep dating everybody because those, those depositions are deposits that you'll be struggling to deal with because of your past. All right? <laughs> so how do I handle men like the ending? Women like the process. Men like, let's go to the point. What do you want to do? Straight to the point. If a woman wants to tell you what she wants to do, she first has to tell you where the problem started and how it makes her feel before we start. To... Men, let's go to the point. I never forget the first time I went to shop abroad. Then I've been looking for how to buy trousers. And, and I couldn't find good trousers in Nigeria. Then, then they, they, were, they were people were still sewing trousers. So most tailors will not do it well. They will not come out on time. So I said, I can't wait to travel abroad and buy trousers. So for the first time, I went to London many years ago. And London is the heart of shopping. I said, I'm going to buy trousers in London. And you see, men like the end product. I want to end all my trouser problem for the rest of my life. So I'm going to buy as many trousers as possible. So we entered the mall. Women like the process. Men like the ending. So for women, when they enter the shop, they want to go around all the shops. They will prize this one. After pricing it, they will leave it and go to the next shop and prize it and leave it. After they go around, they now come back. So let's go to that first one. It's better. Ah, They like the whole process. Men don't like the process. We like the end point. Trouser is trouser. As I entered the mall, there were many shops, but I entered the first mall. I said, the first shop, I said, this is in this shop. I will buy my 10 trousers. No need to go to the remaining. Let's end the problem now. And my wife kept telling me, they don't shop like that. You have to go around and see. I say, no need. I've seen what I'm looking for. Men, you must learn to listen to your wife. They are very smart. Women are smart. She said, they don't shop like that. Check here. Let's check other places. Worst case, if you buy one here, let's check first. I said, no, I'm buying the whole 10 or 12 here in different color. I just jack one trouser. I, I know women know that they need to go and test the dress. Because every shop, even though the right two size two size ten, it might not be exactly the normal size. I don't. I have faith. <laughs> if they say this is size fourteen, I believe them. My wife said, "Let's go and try." I said, "I'm not trying anything." They have, I said, "Told the man, bring tape, check it. Is he is, is working?" I put the trouser like this. I said, "It's my size." They are supposed to try it. I didn't try it. I said, "Bring all the color. This one, all the color. Bring it." They brought it. I pack everything once. Twelve. Paid. I finished my whole shopping in one day. Men like the end. Women like the process. When I got, I, I didn't have enough sense to try those clothes. I just carried them like to Lagos. <laughs> I didn't even know that trouser has cuts that time. That is not all trousers that are the same design. It was horrible. I didn't wear one of those trousers till today. Wasted. Look, I didn't listen to my wife. But women like the process. They will check everything. They enjoy the process. It's like wedding. For men, most men, they can't wait for wedding to be over. Let's start marriage. But women like the process. Let's pick the colors. Is there any color? <laughs> say, no. Let's pick the colors. Let's pick the flower. They like the process. So you must allow them to enjoy the process. Because you, you are more interested in the, in the end. But let them enjoy the process. Same thing with sex. Many people are not enjoying sex in their marriage because the demand wants to get straight to the point. A woman likes the process. How you talk to her throughout the day, before the sex at night, matters. Throughout the day. Talk to her nice, hug her, sing to her. Those are the things that get her in the mood. Then even when you start the main thing, you must first kiss, do other things. For men, no need. One man army. Straight to the point. So before she has started getting even interested, you have even finished. <laughs> Women like the process. How you talk to her. You can't be insulting her from morning to night. Then the night, you just want to come and have sex. One man and his wife. In the morning, the wife called her husband. Baby boy, come and eat your food. The guy said, me, baby boy. You can't be calling me with such insulting terms. He was angry. He didn't eat. He was quarreling. By night, he wanted to have sex. And he was touching her in the dark. She said, who is that idiot? He said, it's me. It's me. 
It's ready to be. It's ready to be called idiot. Now that he wants something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me round up here. Let me round up here. Let me round up here. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, let me round up here. What are the two? Yes, I have to. Uh, don't worry. Um, so, what do we do about this, these differences? Listen, guys, marriage is so powerful, and if you do it right, you'll be so blessed. You'll be so blessed. I've told you, listen, man, cheap, cheap. Just decide to bless your wife. I dare you. Decide to actually find out her needs. They will be different from you. So that's why you need to be you need to learn and you need to be coached. Because they won't make some of those needs don't make sense to you. But you need to learn it. So the first thing is understanding. All right? In dealing with, with these differences, first thing is what? Understand. That's why the first assignment God gave man is husbands, treat your wife according to knowledge. You can't you can't gamble. With it. You need to know how women see things. That's how to treat her. You must get understanding. First Peter 3, 7. You must get understanding. Without understanding, you can't appreciate who she is. You'll be treating her like your fellow guy. When, those days when I used to call my, 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 my wife, we're still dating then. I'll just, you know, she told me that you must be calling me from time to time. I said, okay, good. I, I, I don't have a problem. I'm calling you. So I'll not pick the phone. After two days, move. Not spoken. I'll pick the phone. I want to do what she says. She'll be calling her. I'll not call her. I'll say, hey, how far? I'll say, I'll hail you. She'll not say, you can't hail me. I'm not one of your guys. When you call into to something endearing, into something nice. So I had to learn. You must be understanding. You, the problem is that many people are treating their spouse like the spouse is the same gender with you. You must understand who you are talking to and act accordingly. So understanding is the first thing. Second thing, you must put in effort. You must put in effort. So now that you understand, you need to go out of your way. So for men, for instance, men don't need to hear I love you. Nah, we don't need to. The first I love you that was ever said is enough for the man. He believes it from that day. But for women, it's totally different. You need to say, I love you every day. They need to hear it. For men, that's strange. But go out of your way and be showering her with words. I love you. I need you. You are helping my life. You are one of the biggest blessings that have come to You need to use words. It might be uh, uh, you know, uh, uncomfortable for you as a man because it's not your thing. Men are not, men are not, men are not used to talking about their emotions. You go out of your way. Put effort. Same thing with you as a woman. Put effort. You are used to saying your mind. You are used to not showing respect. Because in the world of women, saying your mind is not a bad thing. You can say your mind. Women are expressive naturally. In the world of men, we don't even talk. So every word is heavy. Somebody gets what I'm saying? You must learn to use your words tactically. Somebody get what I'm saying? You understand that men are logical beings. So when you're making a point, find a logical reason. Women are emotional beings. When you're making a point, make, find an emotional point to control. See what you're saying. So let me give you an example. You want to buy a house. Don't just say, hey, this house, it will make everybody respect me. No, that doesn't make sense to a woman. But you say, this house will be where our kids will grow. The environment is good for children. The woman is interested. You are touching her nerve. And if I get what I'm saying, just I'll buy a sports car, convertible, 800 V8, is this system valve? Woman doesn't understand. But tell her to be convertible, only two seats, me and you. She's interested. Same thing, but you are touching where it matters. So when you have understanding, then you apply effort. You put effort. Go out of your way. Master the art of touching where it matters. Hallelujah. Put effort. Many people are too lazy, so the marriage can't work because you don't want to, don't want to stress yourself. You don't want to go out of your way. You must put effort. A lot of it will not be convenient for you because you are made differently from the opposite sex. I found it, like I told you, God is my relationship mentor. I found it very interesting that God tells men to love your wife. Do you notice that God didn't say women love your husband? I told you God is my relationship coach. If you see how God talks to both sexes, you will see what he's trying to emphasize. Because he's one that created them. He knows how they think. He never told women really to love your husband. That's not the call. He told men love your wife. Because men don't necessarily, don't automatically and easily love. So he said men need to be a bit in touch with your emotional side to love your wife. But women said, respect, submit to your husband. That's what matters to them. Hallelujah. You don't know what love your wife means. Love your wife can also be an insult. It's like telling a child, eat your food. You don't tell an adult, eat your food. An adult knows he should eat his food. If you marry a wife, don't you know you should love the wife? But men are like that. Men are that clueless. So God is saying, look, in be in touch with the emotional side. Love your wife. See what he told the women. He said, women, he said, let the older women teach the younger women how to be how to love their husbands. That word there in love in Titus is the word friendly love. I hope you already know that love is different things. In, in love, different love means different things. So God was trying to tell the women that the kind of love your husband needs is to, for you to be his friend. 
not romantic love. Men don't need you to love them and tell them, I love you, honey. No, that's not what. They like you to be their friend. So he said, let the older women, because of their experience, teach the younger women to love or to be friends with their husband. So listen, women, if you're going to be friends with your husband, you need to be interested in things he's interested in. You go out of your way. If he likes football, you too must like football. You might not like it as much as him. You might not know about it, but at least know a little bit about it. So that sometimes he can watch the match at home instead of going to his friend's house to watch. Men are packed at them as they like to be with their friends. So become his friend. That's what they're telling you. That means not every day you watch Z World. Not every day you watch Telemundo. It's not every day you watch African Magic or whatever you like to watch or all the series that women watch. Sometimes watch football. If he's a Man U fan, know who is who. If he's an Arsenal fan, he will need a lot of petting. Know who is who. <laughs> Here we need love, but no, who is who? <laughs> so once in a while, you are the one that should be giving him breaking news. Ah, that we have bought a new player. He'll say, eh, really? Say, yes, check it now. It's on your phone. We have just bought a new player. Oh, they've sacked our coach. He, 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 he will be tripped that you know something. about You are his friend. Try and be his friend. Is that what I'm saying? Put in some effort. Lastly, I'll, I'll end with this one now. Under this point. How to bridge this gap. It's learn to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. And this is where marrying a believer helps. Listen, I want to say this. Most people think I'm a great husband uh, and all that. And it's true in a way. But you see, it's not true because I'm smart. It's not true because I'm smart. It's true because I always listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. A lot of the things I do, I get inspired by God to do them. I'm not that smart. And because you and your wife are so different, you will need the help of a superior being to always coach you and say, don't talk back. I say, wife, you want to share your opinion? Your blood is burning. The Holy Ghost says, mm-mm, not now. Don't say anything. I will tell you when to talk. But most women won't hear. Say, I will give him fire for fire. I don't support domestic violence anyway, but a lot of times when somebody's been beaten in a marriage, whether the husband or the wife, <laughs> because they beat men too. A lot of times, because somebody was not listening to the Holy Spirit, because when the argument was getting out of hand, the Holy Ghost had been telling one of them, I don't talk again. But she'll say, no, I want to share my mind. And the man will say, I will slap you. And the Holy Ghost will say, don't talk. She will now say, slap me. <laughs> Not knowing that men are very literal beings. Women speak in parables, but men don't understand parables. So a lot of times when women are saying something, they don't mean exactly what they're saying the way they're saying it. They expect to decode it, but men are literal. So if a woman says, leave me, a man is saying, okay, I will leave you. No, for most men don't know. When a woman is saying leave me, she doesn't mean you should leave her. She means you should hold her. But men don't know that. Abi, women, am I correct? When a woman is carrying face and say, I don't want to talk. No, she wants to talk. When you ask a woman, what's wrong? Say nothing. No, there's something. But men are clueless. Say, leave me. You say, okay, let me go and sit down. <laughs> no, don't leave me. <laughs> don't leave me. I'm upset. I need you to know, ask me what's happening. But men say, you say, I should leave you. I'm going out. No. So men don't understand parables, but women speak in parables. So you need somebody to constantly decode for you. So say, no, don't leave her. No, don't say that. Don't say your mind. Leave it. I'll tell you when to say it. If you, do, you must learn to listen to that voice. And everybody, every Christian hears that voice. If you become more tuned to it, and that's what I want to leave you with today. If you don't remember anything I said, married people, remember this one. Please always listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's the best way you'll be a great lover. I learned it early in my marriage. I would get home from work or something. My wife would cook for me. All those food that have bomo, meat, stockfish. And as I'm eating the goosey soup, the Holy Ghost say, give her your stockfish. I will say, Holy Ghost, she's the one that cook it. If she wants stockfish, she knows where. This is my stockfish that she gave me. And right there and then, one or two minutes after, she will tell me, give me your stockfish. And men, in case you don't know, if she asks you for it, your points have reduced. You score more points when you bring the idea yourself. You have removed your mark by letting her be the one to tell you to give you. And I'll be like, Kai, the Holy Ghost told me this thing. I messed up. Sometimes I'll be in the office. The Holy Ghost say, call your wife now. Just check up on her. I'll say, let me finish this thing I'm doing before I call her. The Holy Ghost say, call her now. I say, no, I'm actually typing something very important. I need to finish this mail and send it. Then I will call her. And by the time I'm here typing, she will call me. Then I'll say, I was just about. <laughs> you know those Odo that, ha- that go around and have dots? That's Odo. You have missed the point. So every time the Holy Ghost will prompt you, do this thing, do this thing. That's what makes me look like a great lover. 
is because I always listen. And the times I don't listen, it pains me. Sometimes you'll be on the phone, the Lord says, tell her you love her now. Tell her you miss her. Even though you don't feel like you miss her. You see, men and I have such emotions. Miss you for what? I'm coming home. And by four. Mm-mm. The Lord will say, tell her you miss her. And I'll be arguing. And she will not say, do you miss me? I say, yes. <laughs> Udo. <laughs> the only cause told me. I was just slow, arguing. The voice is always there. One day I was in the car, because, because of how busy our lives are, and everybody needs to learn this, I, I, we know that we need to keep talking. Because your marriage can grow, and it can also go down. You can grow more in love, and you can grow less in love. I'm telling you. Everybody that, that is divorced or having problems, there was one time they really loved each other. But it began to wane, and nobody paid attention. So you must constantly invest in your marriage. So sometimes we'll sit down, maybe after church, instead of going to the house, we'll stay in the car and talk. Sometimes for up to an hour, sometimes more, we'll just stay in the car. That car is small. And only two of us, no phone, no TV, no nothing. Because once we enter the house, there are kids there, there's TV there, there's, we have to eat, we'll just not talk. So we'll sit in that car for some time. Because this is the only time we have only two of us, nobody's distracting us. And we'll just catch up. Gerages, but we'll talk. Because that, that helps marriage. Women like that. Just talk, so we'll just talk. It helps apart our house. Anything going on. We need some time together. So we do that regularly in our house. So one day we did that and as we were about to go down, the legal say, pull her back and just kiss her. It's not something I would, I'm not that smart. So as we were about to go down, she was about to go, I pulled her back and I kissed her. And she was so happy. And she said that was, she, before she came down, that was exactly what she wanted. So imagine if I didn't do it, I would have gotten. <laughs> okay. And she would think I'm a great husband. No, I'm not that smart. The Holy Ghost told me. Something happened recently. I've never even told her this one, so don't tell her. <laughs> and we've agreed that all my gist, nobody should share it, Abby. We've agreed, Abby. So, we were somewhere, and she sent me a chat. Something she was upset about. She sent me in a chat. And the moment she said it, it was a long chat. The moment she finished sending it, the Holy Ghost told me, simple terms, just say, I'm sorry, baby. Finish. The Holy Ghost told me. But in my stubborn ways, I said, no. This issue requires <laughs> war. <laughs> we must debate this issue in the court. You will hear from my lawyers. The Holy Ghost said, just say, I'm sorry, baby. Three words. That's all. I didn't say that. I didn't answer anything. So I got home and we discussed it and it was not going well. You know what, days after, she said, this thing that you took somehow, that all I was expecting when I sent that chat was, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't tell her the Holy Ghost told me. I just faced my front. <laughs> she used exactly the words that the Holy Ghost told me to type. That in my head, in my stubborn head, I didn't type. I don't know how many of you have done worse mistakes. Just say, I love you. Say, I'm sorry. You say, I'm never sorry. Men don't say I'm sorry from my village. I'm from Idoma. We don't, <laughs> we don't say it. It's not manly. You will soon be divorced. Exactly the words. There are many of you like that. Call her now. Apologize. Buy her that thing. Buy her. Some of you, you'll be on the way. God say, buy granite on your way home. You will say, we don't like granite. We don't need what granite. Say, buy. And he will help you. Somebody will even bring granite to your front. And so, God, buy granite. You will say, what am I using granite for? And you will reach home. And she will be drinking Gary. And she will say, I just wish there was granite in this house. You will just face your front. <laughs> knowing that your Odo <laughs> is waiting for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, let's be sensitive. You can't love a child of God right without listening to the Holy Spirit. Because it's not everything everybody will tell you. Sometimes human beings are deep. You can be in a relationship with somebody, he's not telling you everything inside him. You too, you can't see everything you're feeling at the time. Human beings are deep. So if you don't pay attention, some of you, your marriage is at the brink of a big crisis. You are just not paying attention. The Holy Ghost is telling you that pay attention to your wife. She's stressed, she's tired. You are saying she's fine because she uses makeup. <laughs> pay attention. Your husband is tired, he's stressed, he's straying. Pay attention. He's chatting. Chat, chat, chat like typewriter. Mm-mm. There's somebody demonic sending him chat. <laughs> Pay attention. You just face your front. He said it is where? He's a Christian man. Ah. All men are tempted, sir. Are you here, somebody? 
God will help us in the name of Jesus. Today I'm going to pray for different categories of people. But I think the best place to start is for those that need to give their heart to Jesus. If you are here under the sound of my voice and you know you are not born again, please, I would like to pray with you. I would like to have the honor and the privilege of leading you to Jesus, into a personal relationship with Jesus. Because that's the only way he can start hearing his voice. He can start inspiring you, not only in marriage, even your business, your career, your job. He will be giving you nudgings. Write an application. Talk to this man. Call this uncle. Call that friend. That nudging comes alive when you have a relationship with Jesus. As all heads are bowed, if you are here today and you are not born again and you would like to give your life to Jesus, please put your hand on your chest wherever you are. You are here today and you say, Pastor, I don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. If I die now, I'm not sure. I'll make heaven. Please put your hand on your chest wherever you are. I want to have the honor of leading you to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please put your hand on your chest. Thank you. If your hand is on your chest, please can you raise up your other hand? I want to see who I am praying with. If your hand is on your chest, please raise up your other hand. Let me see who I am praying with. Anybody here, please let me see you. Let me see you. Raise up your other hand. God bless you. God bless you. Raise up your other hand. I want to have the honor of leading you to Jesus today. God bless you. I can see that hand. Any other person, please? Any other person, please? Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. God, God has a plan for your life. That plan won't come to pass until you have a relationship with God. That's how it works. If your hand is raised, if you don't mind, please stand. Please stand with your hand on your chest. Stand. Let me pray with you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today. As my Lord and Savior, forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I receive the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for I am born again. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. I want to pray for all the single ladies. If you're a single lady, please can you stand. Ladies, listen, one of the prayers my wife prayed at the early days, was for God to bypass her emotions and lead her to her real husband. Because sometimes our emotions will lead us astray. We're like this man, he's handsome, he can sing, he's gifted. But he might not be the one for you. So I'm going to pray for you that you will not miss your steps. Father, I lift up all this, your daughters. I know you have a precious destiny for every single one of them. Father, I pray, bypass their emotions bypass even their knowledge, bypass their feelings and bring them to the point of destiny. Bring them to the right place. Connect them with the right husband in the name of Jesus. Today I break the power of delay in the name of Jesus. Nothing will be missing from their lives. Anything covering them, I declare the veil be removed. They will be found by the right man in the name of Jesus. Anyone in a wrong relationship, I pray that God will open your eyes. You will not miss the way in the name of Jesus. Anyone wasting your time, God will deliver you in the name of Jesus. The favor of God will be upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray for every couple, every married person, that the purpose for their own marriage will be realized in the name of Jesus. Every marriage is a ministry. Every marriage has a mission. I decree that the reason God brought two of you together, it will be realized in the name of Jesus. Any emotional attachment that is ungodly, I decree today, it is broken in the name of Jesus. God will restore the love in that home. It will grow deeper. It will become sweeter. It will be fresh as ever. In the name of Jesus. You will be a responsible wife. Your marriage will raise godly children. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. We give you praise. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Come on give the Lord a big hand. <laughs>